Today we are going to be building a little hood range uh, that's going to go right here. So we had a metal one. I'll insert a picture right here that went here before, but I really wanted a wooden one. And so that's what Thomas is going to be tackling today. I don't know how good of a DIY project this is gonna be. I'm sure he'll just show you some of his measurements, but everything will determine the size of the insert that you have. So we'll do the best that we can, but I'm really excited to show you how this looks after. All right, I told you this is not gonna be a very good DIY project. Like there is not gonna be like step by step, but we're gonna just talk about what he's got going on here. So I bought an insert that would fit in that section where our range was at, the one that we had. And Ashley showed me a few different designs that she liked. So there's not really an exact step by step tutorial on how to do this because it's all gonna be subject to whatever size your space is going to be. Some people have 24 inches, some people have 36 inches. So you want it to just fit however it will look good. This one is going to be 28 inches wide and the insert I picked is 24 inches to go underneath it. So it'll hide up in there a little bit. Um, I can link a tutorial on how to do like a step-by-step -step build of it that you can like follow the tutorial like that if you have a similar design to hers. So there's not really like an exact step-by-step -step way to do it. But right now I have my framing on the inside, which is basically just these two, you have these two vertical two by fours that are the width that I wanted to fit on the inside. And then I did 45s coming down to two more framed in two by fours and connected it together. That way I have this, the front face is at a slant and allowing the sides to slant as well. So you'll have two angle cuts here. It's like, for example, mine was 40, in, 40 degrees by 15 degrees to make it so it's flush here and at an angle. So if you are not comfortable doing angle cuts or figuring out dimensions, I highly suggest looking at that blog step-by-step -step tutorial. It's very helpful. But for now, I'm gonna finish trimming it in or finish wrapping it. And then I'm going to sand it down a little bit, fill some of my pin nail holes with some stainable wood filler, and then I will stain it and see how it looks. This is a one by eight pine and these are one by six pines. And then this is a one by two that I just trimmed in the outside. So we'll show you the, the next few steps. Uh, we kind of jumped the gun and oh, it's almost done before we even hit record. So, so here's a little bit of what the back looks like. Um, I know this isn't very helpful because you weren't watching like the whole process, but we'll show you that blog like we said. And he didn't use that exact tutorial, like no. not really at all, but it did help him get just a few ideas when it came to building this himself. You'll notice in the back I have my two by six that runs across because I'm gonna shoot it in back here. And then once I have them all up and they're shot in, I'll come in the back and put a support piece that goes up that I can shoot a few in up to the top. To get this stain color, what we first did was did one coat of this weathered oak from Minwax. I will have these linked below in the description box. So we did our first coat with the weathered oak and then the second coat that is the actual color is the color Provincial in the brand Minwax. 
and Thomas will explain, but he just very lightly applies this so we don't get a very dark color. But the mixture of these two colors is what gave it this really natural final look. dipping it but I'm actually taking half of it like that was too much so I'm gonna absorb it onto the other side and then I'm just lightly touching it because I don't want to push very hard and make it any darker than the rest so I'll keep like that light pressure up the whole time if it is a little darker just take a dry rag and just touch it a little bit So without doing the weathered oak first, like the first coat, this is actually how dark it would absorb. So you can really see the difference there. Same kind of wood, way darker. Look at that. So it really helps if you want this exact color, do that weathered oak first coat and then a light coat of the provincial. Yeah, like make a little bit go a long way because this will still turn dark if you dip this too much. My next step is to put the vent up inside of here and get it plugged into my plug up there. Mount it inside here from the back and then I will patch that hole up there, my last piece. Well, I'll patch this piece up and then I'll end up cutting my pieces for the very top and putting those in. I had to hardwire it, which means most of these vents just come with open wires. But you can buy one of these for six bucks at Ace, or, and then you just connect the two lives. Yeah, ours was always just plugged in. So see, you can see the plug up there. Uh, moment of truth. Nothing blew up. Nothing blew for up. Square. I like that cord. Oh my goodness. It works. I wanted to show you real quick since it's the next day, but this is something else we are working on just so you can get like an idea. We are wrapping all of the beams in our kitchen. So they will be the same color, they'll match, and they're also going to be a lot wider. These are like four inches 
wide if that and these are like six inches so they are they're just a lot taller and wider you can kind of see an idea right there so he just used the original one that was up there and then shot this beam into it and if you guys are interested in a tutorial on DIY faux beams we do have one so I will have that linked below but I'm just really excited to lighten up all of the beams we have in here also over here you can see everything's just really dark and we're wanting a more natural uh, stain color so that is the next thing that we'll be doing and we will show you guys once this is all done we'll have some kind of video mm -hmm. 